What happened in AI this week? This week was again not a quiet week. Apple outsourced Siri's brain. Governments stepped up to stop AI abuse. AI salaries in India are breaking records and markets are flirting with bubble territory again. And AI limits played out live on television in India. Add to that Tim Cook's retirement rumors linked to Apple's slow AI progress and a reported meta clash between Zuck and Wang, his $14 billion hire. Wang criticized Zuckerberg's deeply involved management style as suffocating. And then Elon Musk's lawsuit against OpenAI heads to trial. All in all, this was a direction-setting week for AI in 2026. This wasn't about smarter AI. It was about who controls it. These are the nine most important things that happened in AI this week. At number one, we've got deals, deals, and more deals. And the first big one is, did Apple just crown Google king? 2026 has barely begun, and one of the biggest AI deals of the year may be already locked in. Apple has confirmed that Google's Gemini models will power the next generation of Siri, a move that instantly reshapes the AI power map. Google has also reassured privacy-conscious iPhone users about data safety. According to reports, Apple is paying around $1 billion a year for the partnership. Markets liked it. Google's stock moved up. Apple's not so much. What's everyone else saying? The comments are rolling in. IDC's analyst Francisco Geronimo put it bluntly. By outsourcing the foundation layer of its AI to Google, Apple is effectively admitting that its internal efforts can't compete with Google Gemini, its capability and scale in the short term. That single line captures the unease around this deal. And then the rumor. Industry chatter suggests OpenAI consciously stayed out of an Apple deal, reportedly because it's working on its own AI first device, while others are saying ChatGPT is the biggest loser in this deal. But one thing is sure that Google and ChatGPT are on a collision course. Next up, the Pentagon. It's integrating Grok as the US expands its AI military strategy. This comes even as Grok faces restrictions and scrutiny in several countries over content and safety concerns. The Pentagon already has AI and cloud agreements with Google. The focus, according to defense officials, remains capability, speed, and operational advantage, not public-facing AI policy debates. And then we have Wikipedia. Wikipedia has become one of the most important inputs in AI training. Why? Because it's got 65 million articles across 300 languages and core training data for generative AI systems. The Wikimedia Foundation, Wikipedia's parent, has signed AI training and licensing deals with Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, Perplexity, and Mistral. It already had an agreement with Google. What's changed? The most widely used open source knowledge on the internet is no longer free for AI training. Then on another note, OpenAI has acquired Torch for $100 million to help build ChatGPT Help. And guess what? The entire team of Torch is four people. Do the math. That's $25 million per person. Its core innovation is what the founders describe as a medical memory for AI, a system that aggregates lab results, medications, doctor visit records, and wearable device data. At number two, let's dive into models. And this week, we've got DeepSeek preparing for round two. The release is expected anytime 
soon with a new model version. Around this time last year, DeepSeek shocked the entire AI industry by showing that strong models could be built around open source at far lower cost. This time, it's promising a similar disruption. Four key points are surfacing. Strong emphasis on coding capability, a more efficient training approach that is designed to use fewer chips and built fully on open source. Around 80% of startups now rely on open source models driven by cost, control, and speed, not ideology. The central question remains, can frontier level capability now be built entirely in the open? Now know Jim that open models have also reached the frontier. Still solidly is six months behind the frontier models, but every single six months, a new model is emerging and these models are getting smarter and smarter. Jensen Wong is betting on it, and so are the Chinese models. And we will get to know in the next couple of weeks. Now, healthcare models are also moving into production. Last week, OpenAI announced a major push with healthcare focus models and workflows with OpenAI for Health. This week, Anthropic followed with Claude for healthcare. In October 2025, Claude for Life Sciences was rolled out, focused on research and scientific platforms. And now in January, Claude for healthcare, HIPAA ready products. Anthropics focus, enterprise healthcare workflows, agents for clinical operations, and of course, safety built in by design. And for consumers that are using Claude Pro and Max can connect lab results and health records via Apple Health or Android Health Connect. It is positioned as a supplement to doctors, not a replacement. Then Google announced a retail-focused expansion of Gemini, positioning it as the engine for agentic commerce. Gemini Enterprise for Customer Experience is a single agentic platform combining shopping and customer service for large retailers. Google say people shop across its platform more than a billion times a day. Gemini is now deeply embedded directly into that flow. It was bound to happen. ChatGPT has started to test ads. Ads will begin appearing at the bottom of the chatbot's answers for free users and for Go subscribers. The revenue possibility is mind-boggling, which is valued as high as $500 billion, according to Fortune. At number three, we've got dangers and regulation. First up is Google's AI health summaries are under fire. There are now multiple cases of Google's AI overviews giving inaccurate and misleading health information. A Guardian exclusive found false interpretations of blood test results. After criticism, Google removed or limited some of the AI generated health summaries. The next one finally took too long in coming. X clamps down on Grok after global backlash of Grok being used to undress images of real people. X announced technological measures that now prevent editing of images of real people into revealing clothing. But as critics noted, the abuse should never have been possible. At number four, let's talk about the AI productivity paradox. More AI, but mixed productivity. According to a Workday survey, 85% say AI saves them between one to seven hours a week. But 37% of that time is lost to rework, correcting errors and verifying output. And in India, we saw a live test of the AI replaces humans argument. It's me versus Blue Machines AI. Ernab Goswami, one of India's most well-known news anchors, debated an AI system, Big Blue, on whether AI can replace journalism. The gaps were obvious, no real opinion, overly verbose, deflects hard questions, struggles with neutrality under pressure. It showed where AI still breaks down in roles demanding judgment and accountability. At least true journalists are safe 
for now. At number five, let's talk about recruiting that's getting AI tested. McKinsey, one of the leading consulting firms, is using its internal AI tool called Lily in select final interview rounds in the US. Candidates are evaluated on how well they can prompt the AI, how they challenge its output, and how they apply reasoning to synthesize a final answer. This is not a test of technical engineering. It's a test of collaboration and judgment. At number six, cognitive warning signs. Denmark has long been hailed as a digital champion, but guess what? It is rolling back digital first learning in schools. Educators report declining concentration and rising mental health concerns. It's back to the textbooks. Then a Brookings Institute study warns AI use in education can undermine foundational cognition and encourage thinking offload. It can also create long-term learning gaps. The damage researchers say is daunting but fixable if addressed early. One student put it simple. It's easy. You don't have to use your brain. At number seven, you've got India's AI salary surge. 18 to 22 lakhs as a fresher in India. HCL Tech announced these packages for AI ready freshers. This applies to a small elite cadre. But the broader industry trends by TestLeap also shows that India's AI market is growing over 40% year on year. More than one million roles expected by 2026. Salaries are expected to grow 15 to 20 percent per year. Seven lakh starting packages are now common and for those who keep upgrading, 30 lakhs per year within five years is increasingly common. At number eight, we've got markets, bubbles and bottlenecks. Alphabet, Google's parent, brushed past a $4 trillion market cap. It's been boosted by Gemini and the Apple deal. So the bubble talk is back. Investor Michael Burry has flagged renewed concerns about AI-driven market exuberance and concentration risk. But his bet is specific. Burry is betting against NVIDIA, not against Meta or Microsoft. In a recent post, he called NVIDIA the purest play arguing that the company is now entirely dependent on hyperscaler spending and questioning whether that math holds up long term. Moving from GPUs, the real bottleneck is now memory. High bandwidth memory is running tight. Compute exists, memory does not. Despite this, Meta announced Meta Compute, a major AI infrastructure expansion to build tens of gigawatts this decade and hundreds of gigawatts or more over time. But investors were not pleased. The stock is down 4% this week. And at number nine, we've got AI's next frontier, classes. Another news from Meta. Meta is doubling production of Ray-Ban smart glasses after strong demand. The new number, 20 million units annually, and this could increase to 30 million if market conditions warrant. New features include real-time messaging, personal teleprompters, voice-first interaction, AI designed to fade into the background while improving daily life. This is one area where Meta is clearly in the lead. So what happened in AI this week? AI isn't slowing down, but the rules around it are finally catching up. And 2026 is where the tension explodes. That's what happened in AI this week.